Hi guys, my name is Jeff Ream. I'm the high school counselor over at North Tile High School. I do apologize right off the bat that I'm not there this evening. Um, I was really looking forward to coming and spending a little time talking with you and meeting all of our incoming 8th grade families. Uh, I apologize. I am currently battling a pretty massive sinus infection and it is currently winning. So I'm not at school today. Um, I'm recording this from home so that you guys can at least put a name to a face. Uh, and I can also share a few pieces of information about coming to the high school successfully and also what are some things to expect. I did meet with your students a couple weeks ago in their English classes and um, went over stuff about course selection, and I did post a video uh, that covered much of what I covered with your students in case you were interested in doing that. A lot of the information is available on the North Tahoe High School YouTube page, which you can find at the very bottom of our North Tahoe High School webpage. There's a YouTube link. So I'd highly encourage you to check out the YouTube page because that does give a lot of information. I try to record all my meetings. So if you ever, for example, you have a sinus infection and cannot make a meeting um, that I'm holding, I typically record them so you can access them at any time. So I wanna to talk to you guys briefly, um, hopefully in about 10, maybe maximum 15 minutes. Um, about making the jump to high school and kicking 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 it really off strong. So, um, like I said, my name is Jeff, and uh, my email is listed there. Feel free to take a picture of any of these slides as we go through. I'll try to keep them up there for a couple minutes. Um, but typically, <coughs> excuse me, email is the best uh, communication tool apart from appointments and stuff like that. Um, I'm fairly responsive to emails, so please do reach out via email. Um, I'm also not going to be taking eighth grade appointments until after spring break. I do encourage you to set up appointments if you're curious about things after spring break. However, uh, the 400 students that are currently at high school do demand my attention right now, and um, it's not something that I should be spend, uh, dedicating a ton of time to the students that um, are not currently at my school. Um, however, I do highly encourage you, if you guys have questions, please send me an email. I'm very happy to answer as many questions as I can um, without necessarily taking that time slot away from some of our high school students right now. Um, and I would do the same thing for, for you guys when you guys come to the high school. I want to make sure that I, I'm dedicating my 100% of my effort um, on the high schoolers and, and their success. And so please do send me an email uh, with any questions. I'm usually pretty responsive. I'll get back to you rather quickly. Okay. I do uh, address all things school counseling. So um, very similar to the middle school side, Ms. Schuster and Mr. Mora. I am the one school counselor as of right now at the high school side. So I address academic um, concerns. So how students are progressing academically, also setting up uh, four-year plans, making sure they're making their progress towards high school graduation and college. I also um, work with students on the social emotional side of things. So are, are students feeling successful? Are students feeling good? Um, how can we better, how can we support students in that way? Um, and then also uh, college and career. So college and career uh, will be kind of post-secondary options. So how do we, how do we transition out of high school into something next, whether that's straight to a job, to an apprenticeship, to a trades or vocational school, to a junior college, to a four-year college or other programs, the military, gap years, other things out there that are available for students. So I am that person for you. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'll also kind of give you guys a little bit of a heads up. Um, a lot of this is still, there's still um, not a lot of specifics or, or guarantees, but I wanted to make sure that you guys knew that um, there is a decent likelihood that we will also be gaining another school counselor, at least on a partial time um, next year, who will likely end up working with the, the ninth grade class. So um, there's a decent chance that I may not be your necessarily point of contact for the ninth grade. I will likely work with you fairly often. Um, and it's very good that you know who I am because I will likely work with your students in the rest of 10th through 12th grade. Um, but I wanted to give you guys a heads up too, so there and and you I, you will definitely be working with me through the rest of this year. Um, if we do end up hiring someone, we're not sure who that is. I guarantee you, we will be hiring the best person available, um, and they would likely not be starting until the fall. So um, just wanted to give you guys a little bit of heads up about that, so you're not surprised when you guys do come in the fall. So big thing is college does start next year. I know there's typically, and this is oftentimes a lot of the reason why incoming ninth graders and ninth grade parents sometimes have a little bit of a panic is because they realize, oh man, it's almost time for college or what's after high school. Um, and, and I do totally agree that it's something that's very important, um, but it's something that you don't, I want to kind of ease your fears potentially that it's not something that you should be stressing out majorly right now. Um, 
college does start next year, but it's primarily by students performing and being successful at high school. One of the number one reasons that we've identified is that students maybe cannot apply to college as seniors is because they get poor grades. Typically, when we talk about poor grades, that's usually Ds or Fs as ninth and 10th graders. So really their main concern about maintaining college eligibility is performing well in their classes, keeping those Cs or better. Okay. High school does require a specific mindset from students, so we really enjoy working with all students, but um, in particular, the students that will have a, an advantage when they come to high school are students that kind of have that self-starting, hardworking, ready to take on a challenge type of attitude. Um, we can help everyone be successful, but those students tend to have a leg up sometimes when they come in and kick that off. I told the students that how you start high school really kind of determines how high school might be for you. And so while it can't, it can change if you started it, say poorly, um, it makes it so much easier if you start high school on the right foot with a really good attitude, coming to school every day, working hard, that kind of stuff. Um, it's much harder to kind of come back from a deficit perhaps, um, by missing assignments or missing a lot of school and then potentially getting a D or F in classes that can kind of cause long-term effects that we don't necessarily see the full potential at right now. A couple key to, keys to success that you can help us, we really try to partner with you guys as parents, um, is number one is study. And this is a huge one that you guys do have, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> insight into. We do at the high school level expect all students to study one hour to two hours each night of the week. Okay, roughly about 30 to 40 minutes per academic course, at least through the ninth and 10th grade. You start looking at more advanced courses and you might get up to an hour per course. Um, and that is a fairly different thing than perhaps the middle school and elementary school experiences. Um, homework, studying, all that stuff does extremely matter at the high school level. So um, I encourage your students to start practicing that now, making sure that they were studying, making sure they were completing their homework. Um, but just another thing to remember is that studying does not necessarily equal homework alone. Studying is homework, and that's a major component. Um, but it's also, uh, you know, a student might come home and not have homework. They still have study time, so they should be reading. They should be preparing for a future quiz, practicing problems out of their math book, reviewing notes, which they, they should be taking notes in class, um, creating practice tests, working ahead on projects or group projects. All those things can be counted as studying, and they all are helpful for learning. So I would encourage you guys to set up a place at home where you guys can set one to two hours of time aside each night of the week to get some of this stuff done. Now, please note, I'm not asking you to hover over your student, to nag your student per se. Um, we're, we're trying to kind of uh, emphasize more of a partnership between you and your students. So, um, you know, they hopefully will realize they need to do this, and then that makes it easier for them to actually ask you for help um, with setting up their time wisely. <coughs> One thing that could help in this day and age is also kind of monitoring some of their phone activity, um, both while they're trying to study. Um, typically, phones are not required for studying. Um, you will have they will have Chromebooks, which can be just as distracting at times. But um, you know they're typically not going to be texting on their phone and Snapchatting and that kind of thing. So I would encourage you guys they don't need their phones for for studying typically. Um, and then also kind of monitoring them late at night. That is a major problem with today's society is, is late night phone use that prevents students from sleeping and being successful. Another thing that um, is really key to the success in high school is getting involved. We have a number of different clubs and sports um, and leadership opportunities and other school activities that students will be able to get involved in. Um, some students, I told them, you know, some students really love school. Some students really don't. And, and everyone kind of has, has a, a place on that spectrum in between. And that's okay. You know, our, we, we hope that students like school, but we also are not, I'm not, at least me, I'm not um, unrealistic that I expect every student to just be dying to come to school. Um, so I told them that if, if you're a student that potentially maybe is not looking forward to come to school, this is a key way to help you kind of hopefully have something that kind of keeps you going and, and kind of encourages you to come to school every day. And so sports clubs, um, you know, we have a, the, a whole wide gambit of um, high school sports throughout the years. Um, a number of different clubs on campus. If a student wants to start a club, it's actually a fairly simple process. Um, typically, they just need a few <coughs> other students who are interested in <coughs> participating in that club. And then also a, uh, a faculty advisor who might look at it. And then there's a few other um, pieces involved. But it's, you know, if a student really wants to start a club, we are 
all the clubs that have started are because students were interested in it. So we want to encourage students to be um, leader. That kind of shows a leadership, but it also kind of will help them get involved. You know, if they want to have an anime club, if they want to have the Madden or NBA 2K Live or whatever club, they can do that. Um, getting involved in their education also helps school make school easier and enjoyable. Okay, so that they make connections with friends. They may also make connections with faculty and staff. Um, so the teachers are there to be helpful, to be supports and to teach. Um, but they're also, you know, oftentimes students spend time in classes with their teachers. So at lunchtime and break and brunch. Okay. So I encourage them to take charge and be involved while they're at school. So taking the right load, I'm going to very, very quickly go through a few key things. And number one thing that I wanted to mention, um, that will hopefully set you guys a little bit at ease. And I've said it before, but, um, we, this is not our first time doing this. Okay. So we know that there's oftentimes some anxiety about starting high school and taking the right classes and that kind of thing. So I wanted you to take a deep breath and, and just know your student will be taking the right class next year. Okay. Ultimately their choices that they have to make are electives and what electives are, are strictly things that they're interested in. Okay. I'll go through a little bit of that in the future, but just know that all students that start Nortel High School, unless specifically stated on, say, an IEP or some other formalized educational plan, will start high school ready to go to any college that they want to. Okay, they will be as competitive as any other student, <coughs> and they do start <coughs> on a college prep schedule. Um, students must take, and, and we do continue to have them take, um, courses on a subject area requirement called typically the, our, that, meet our, that meets our high school graduation requirements as well as the, the um, preliminary college requirements called the A through G requirements. Those are the, the California minimum requirements for the CSU and the UC, the California State University and the U University of California systems. Those uh, two systems are kind of the golden rule that if you can kind of meet their minimums, you can typically meet the others. Other things come into play with competitiveness, but that typically starts happening usually in your typical junior and senior year. So there's a pretty set standard classes that students in ninth and even 10th grade take throughout high school. So I want to set your mind a little bit at ease. Just, you know, it might be a little bit hard, I realize, but please just trust us. These are, you know, we, we send students to college all over the world um, every year and they all start the same place that you are. And so there's not really a wrong class that your student will take. So I want to set your mind at ease, help your students pick the correct course that they want to take for those two electives or possibly three electives that we'll talk briefly about in, this, in the future. Um, another thing too, is if your family is the first, um, if you're, if this child might be the first in the family to go to college, don't worry. Um, we're also here to help with that. Um, College is not for everyone, but we want to make sure college is an option for everyone if students do choose that that's the road that they want to follow. Um, you know, we, we do have a college prep kind of culture, and um, we think it's a great option for students. There are a number of different options that are available, but just because maybe a family your family doesn't have experience with the college process, um, don't worry. We are going to be here to come alongside you and help you through that process. So here are a few things that typically ninth graders are going to be taking. This is um, the A through G requirements. Okay, so number one, there is no history in ninth grade. Some people may say yes. Some people may, you know, be sad about that, but there is actually no history requirement in, at Nortel High School in ninth grade. That will start up in tenth grade, so you don't even have to worry about a history course. English nine, you're going to select either honors English nine or English nine. A lot of this is going to be dependent on um, recommendations from your English teacher right now. If you do have concerns, please reach out to them regarding their recommendations. Same thing with integrated math. We are we are on a strictly integrated math approach. We will not be approving algebra, geometry, or algebra two any longer. Um, it'll be integrated math one, two, and three um, is a typical minimum college requirement. Um, students will typically start at the next level of math that they um, are coming out of in eighth grade. So if they were in the Common Core eight math, typically they will start in the integrated math one. If they are in the um, integrated math one program, typically they would be starting integrated two, unless there are major concerns potentially from the teacher that maybe the learning didn't quite happen to where it needs to be to move into integrated two. That would be a great discussion to have with the math teacher um, your student currently has. We will get recommendations from, from both the English and math. However, know that we do honor your guys' um, decisions as parents. Um, if you guys chose to potentially 
go against a recommendation, that's completely your right and we will stand behind you. Um, we may just ask you to sign a form just knowing that you maybe are going against a recommendation. All ninth graders also start um, with the science class in biology. So those are three classes automatically that students are going to have. So English, math, and biology. Students will also have a couple options that they can take. So the fourth class that typically students are going to have is going to be PE and health and independent study PE and health. In a little bit, you'll hear from Jesse Ernst, the PE teacher. She's going to go over some of the differences between those two classes um, and just know that those are two options. So typically students in ninth and 10th grade will have a PE class of some type, whether that has a health component or not. Uh, most students in ninth grade, we start with the health component. The E, F, and G um, are typically the electives that we're looking at. Okay, the E is the world language, so that's going to be typically for most students, it's going to be Spanish 1 or Spanish 3 for Spanish speakers. Students who speak Spanish at home or are um, native Spanish speakers or have gone through, say, the immersion program typically will start in our Spanish 3 SS or Spanish 3 for Spanish speakers program. Most other students who no hablo inglés or no hablo español, um, you know, they're going to typically start in Spanish 1. Okay, so um, there might be a few cir circumstances where a student might want to start in Spanish too. Those would probably be a great um, email to me asking kind of this is where I think I might be. Um, I can get, get you in contact either with our Spanish teacher or give you some ideas that I've had from um, students in the past. Uh, visual performing arts. So if you're considering band, for example, <coughs> um, that would be there. Uh, typically, students are either going to select symphonic band or jazz ensemble. Um, we also have art, ceramics, photography, and then a musical theater um, what typically students would call like our drama program. Um, those are our visual performing arts and those are all college approved as well as the world language courses. And then we have a G college prep electives and our CTE requirements. Okay, so typically students might choose one of those as well. So that'd be engineering. We have our engineering one program, which you'll hear from in just a minute as well. Our culinary program, as well as our music event management program and our leadership programs. Okay, so the leadership is an independent study class, um, so a student could select that as, say, a seventh course if they wanted to. We typically do not allow that to be a sixth class. With um, Typically, it will be an additional course. Okay, so here are two examples of um, a potential ninth grade schedule. Okay, and the two differences are this. One schedule, um, which you see on the right-hand side of your screen, um, has at the bottom, you see independent study PE and health. When a student takes independent study PE and health, they typically will fill um, another course in its place. It's not going to take a class period, so they will have essentially seven classes. And that's a choice you can make. Please listen to Jesse as she goes over some of the requirements um, and make sure that's going to be a good fit for you. Uh, because once you do sign up, typically you're going to be stuck in that class after that three-week period, and you're kind of signing up to make, make sure you're participating in sports or some sort of um, organized, professionally-led um, physical activity outside of school. <coughs> on the left hand side you see the six class requirement and basically you see um, a ma the major difference is going to be um, one of those elective slots that you see on the right is potentially taken away f with PE and health typically if a student does not play sports primarily um, if they're if they are more interested in taking PE at school um, they're going to do this six class option they could add, add a seventh class to say that leadership course but um, this might be um, what it might look like. So that English, the math, biology, those are all basics. Okay, um, PE and health will need to be in there at, at some point or another. So those are four core component courses. Um, most students, I would highly suggest starting in a world language. Um, that would that is technically an elective, um, so that would be something that you could take. Um, but I would highly suggest that most students will take Spanish. Um, if there's a strong desire for other languages, we can discuss that um, in person or in person or via email as well. At a later time. Um, and then those two electives. Like I said, there's no wrong electives that you can take. Um, pick an elective that you want to do and go for it. Um, that is part of the fun of high school is you get to start choosing some of your classes. Um, so VPA is the Visitor Performing Arts. Um, typically that would be one that you could choose. There's also our CTE, Career Technical Education courses that you can also choose from as well. Um, with the six classes, you can typically choose one or the other. Um, seven classes, you might be able to choose um, both of them potentially. So um, I do encourage you guys to make sure you do that. Your students came home with um, packets. There are also PDFs on my counseling area of the website, plus a lot more information on the counseling area of the website. I, I highly encourage you to access that and read through some of the, de the details. Um, I will be returning to the middle school on Monday and Tuesday, uh, Monday, the fe February 27th, and then Tuesday, the 28th to go through course requests with your students. It's going to be a one to two minute conversation with your student. Unfortunately, it can't be a full on counseling session. 
I'm plugging in essentially, are you taking honors or not? Are you taking independent study PE or not? Are you, what are your two electives or potentially one elective you're considering taking? That is kind of the piece that I'll be coming back on there. So please make sure you've had that discussion and there's a form that I've asked the students to get signed in return uh, <coughs> to their English teacher before that date. So I want to thank you guys for your attention. I, I apologize to Joanna if I went over my time limit. Um, hopefully that's helpful. Again, please reach out to me via email. You'll see it again pop up on the screen for just a second. So in case you didn't get a chance to write it down. Once again, please check out the Counseling Area the website. I encourage email questions. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys next year. Um, we're very excited to have this eighth grade incoming class come, come over. And, you know, thank you for your time and attention tonight. I'm very sorry. Once again, I, I'm not there with you. Uh, but enjoy the rest of your evening.